Hey, what's up guys? It's David Warren. Thanks for watching. I am a travel nurse practitioner. However, in addition to my clinical jobs, I have some jobs that are non-clinical and one of which I make over $300 an hour as a nurse practitioner. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can find these jobs and how you can make over $300 an hour as a nurse practitioner. So let's jump right into it. In January of 2018, I received a phone call from an attorney asking me if I would like to serve as an expert witness in a medical malpractice case. And at first I was a little taken aback by that because I really didn't know what a expert witness was or what the expert witness did or how that even played into the medical malpractice arena. And so I talked to the attorney about it. I said, honestly, I really don't know what that is or what that even means or what that job would entail. And the attorney was very helpful. Um, she basically said an expert witness is somebody who has a specialized body of knowledge, who has um, experience in a field that's related to a particular lawsuit. And so in this instance, it was a nurse practitioner that was being sued uh, by a patient and the nurse practitioner worked in the emergency department. And so the expert witness for the nurse practitioner needed to be somebody who worked in the ER, who had similar experience, and who of course was a nurse practitioner who could testify uh, on behalf of that nurse practitioner. And so I said that, sure, that's something I would be interested in. What all does this entail? And she said, basically, uh, we'll send you medical records of the visit in which the lawsuit is based upon. You'll review those records. And based on what you think the standard of care is based on your knowledge or experience you will either agree with what the practitioner did or you will disagree with what the practitioner did and so in those two instances if you agree with what the practitioner did you can support the care provided by that nurse practitioner then we will retain you as our expert witness and ultimately if this case goes to trial then you will testify on behalf of this nurse practitioner that he or she did meet the standard of care that uh, he or she did do what was right by the patient. And on the other side of that, if you don't agree with what the practitioner did, so let's say you review the medical record and the practitioner didn't do what was right, maybe they didn't order the right test, they didn't give the right medication, whatever it was, you can say, no, I disagree with what the practitioner did, and at which point you will be dismissed from the case and you would not would not be retained you, that would be the end you would review the medical record and say I don't agree with that I and it, communication would be cut off you wouldn't have any really anything else to do with that case and so those are the two options and so I said certainly I would be interested in that um, what would be the next step and she said well send us a fee schedule and your copy of your CV and then we will get back to you and so I was a little clueless on that because I didn't know what what is a fee schedule and what all does that have on there? I was kind of clueless on that. So I took to Google, took to some books and kind of found out what exactly is a fee schedule. And a fee schedule is what you will be paid, your hourly rate for the duties that you will be doing uh, in the medical malpractice case. And so I found out that the average uh, amount you were paid per hour is anywhere from $200 to $500 for reviewing medical records as an expert witness. And so once you review these records, you will send the attorneys an invoice and then they will pay you. Um, however, I will also say on the fee schedule, if you go to trial, um, your wage increases, it will be anywhere from $500 up to eight or $900 an hour whenever you testify at trial if the case actually goes that far and goes to trial. So it really depends on where the case goes. If you're just reviewing records, you will make a lower amount. If you are going to trial, testifying in trial, or if you're giving your deposition, meaning the attorney that is suing the practitioner deposes you, wants to find out what you know, wants to find out your opinion, um, then you will make a little bit higher wage than you would if you're just reviewing medical records. And again, there's no set wage for all of this. It's all dependent upon you, what you want to make, and what the attorneys or what the insurance company, the medical malpractice insurance company of the practitioner is willing to pay. And so I looked on Google and I kind of found a, 
average salary or an average wage, not salary, an average wage for each of these tasks. So for reviewing medical records, for giving deposition, for uh, testifying a trial, and I compose that into a Word document. And I'll actually link that down below so you can see what my fee schedule looks like. And that's what you make, that's how you're paid. And again, it's not, it's not an amount that they offer you, it is an amount that you offer them to pay. And they will either say, yes, we'll retain you and you can be the expert witness based on your opinion, or no, we'll find somebody else. And so I put together a fee schedule, I submitted it to the attorney, and I got a call a few days later that said, yes, we would like to retain you. And in which case, the attorney sent a medical records to me for me to review. And so once you review these records, then you form an opinion uh, based on what happened in that visit. So again, I was on the defense side uh, representing the nurse practitioner, so I would either agree with what the nurse practitioner did or I would not agree with it. And this comes down to your clinical judgment. So this is where your experience in whatever area you work in really comes in because you'll read these records and you'll think, what would I have done in this situation? Is this appropriate? Did the practitioner act in a manner that, uh, that was prudent and reasonable and did not violate the standard of care? Or did they do something that really messed up? Did they violate the standard of care? Did they not order a test? Did they not give a medication that they were supposed to? So you really form an opinion based on what the practitioner did. And then in which case, after that, you will call the attorney back and say, this is what I think. This is what my opinion is on this case. I agree. I completely agree with what the practitioner did. He did not violate the standard of care. I can, I can support the actions of this practitioner. And in which case you will be retained by the, uh, by the attorney. And so you are now a part of, you're an independent consultant. You are a contractor of the, of this case. And so if the case goes to trial, then you will be responsible for testifying at trial uh, on behalf of this nurse practitioner uh, with your expert opinion, with your expert body of knowledge. And so an expert witness, again, as I said, is somebody who possesses a certain body of knowledge. They're an expert in a certain field related to whatever the area of the lawsuit is. So in this case, it's malpractice. So is what you would do at trial is when you're testifying, you are putting into layman's terms, you are explaining to the judge, to the jury, to non-medical people what exactly happened in this case and how did this practitioner not mess up or how did they meet the standard of care. And so that's your job because people in court, judges, jury, the attorneys, they're not medical people. They don't really understand medicine like somebody who is a medical professional. And so your job is to condense down and to put into layman's terms what happened in this case, what you would do in a similar circumstance, and, and did they meet the standard of care. So that brings up kind of the next point. What all does being a nurse practitioner expert witness entail? So I've hit on a little bit of this. It entails reviewing medical records. So the attorneys will send you records, you will review the records, and again, you will form an opinion based on what happened in that visit. You will review depositions. So everybody in the case usually will be deposed, meaning the uh, opposite attorney. So if you're on the defense side, the plaintiff's attorney will depose the nurse practitioner being sued to find out what happened I mean, it's really a chance to ask questions and to get information. And so as an expert witness, you very, mo very well may be deposed as well, meaning the attorney will ask your opinion on this case, they will ask you questions, they will try to poke holes in your story to make you seem not credible. Um, so there are a variety of ways that uh, attorneys will get information from you. And again, if you're being deposed, the attorney on the opposite side will be the one deposing you. So they are obviously of a differing opinion than you are if they're the ones representing the client in the lawsuit. So you'll review medical records, you'll review depositions of other people in the case, you will potentially be deposed as well, and then ultimately, uh, if this case goes to trial, you will go to trial and you will testify at trial in court on the witness stand about the actions of that practitioner. Did the practitioner take appropriate action? Did they meet the standard of care? Did 
uh, whatever, whatever the practitioner, whatever they're claiming the practitioner did or didn't do, did that actually cause harm to the patient? And so your job is to really look at the case, read through the records, and form an opinion based on what you read in those records. That's very a, con a very condensed version of what a nurse practitioner expert witness is and what they do. It is a um, it's a fun job. It's really cool. You get to review medical records. Uh, again, it's non-clinical. You can work from home. You can work from Hawaii, wherever you want to work from whenever you're reviewing these documents. Um, it, it's your responsibility to get them reviewed and then to communicate with the attorney about what you find or about what your opinion is. So let's go over some pros and cons of being a nurse practitioner expert witness. So pros. You make good money. Uh, again, you make really good money compared to a clinical job. You get to work from home. You get to work from a remote location. You get to work on your computer. You don't really have to show up at the office or at the ER you know, for 12 hours. You get to work kind of in your own time. As long as the work gets done, then you, uh, then you can kind of do that wherever you want. So I would say those are the top two pros of that. The top two cons. So the first one is it can be a highly stressful job. Um, reviewing the records, again, that's the easy part. Whenever you have to be deposed or whenever you go to trial, that's the stressful part. Because whenever you go to trial, you will be examined and cross-examined, meaning you will be examined by the, by the attorney that retains you. So they will ask your opinion on that case and you, and you will really try to lay down uh, the basis for your opinion and why you agree with what the practitioner did. But then the other side gets to examine you as well, so it's called cross-examination. And that's where the opposing attorney will kind of go at you and ask questions and really try to poke holes in your story and make you sound like you're not credible. And that's a, uh, that's a stressful part. And so I would say that's the con. Uh, one of the cons of being an expert witness is it can be really stressful. The second con is um, these jobs are kind of hard to come by and so I'm gonna go into that right now um, they're kind of hard to come by because again this is not something that you're going to apply for you're not gonna see these listed on indeed.com or monster or wherever you're just not gonna see these jobs listed it's gonna come by a random phone call and that's how you land these jobs is you just randomly get called by an attorney and that brings up some more questions how did the attorney get my contact information that seems kind of scary um, i would say the number one way that attorneys will find expert witnesses are by either word of mouth meaning they talk to other attorneys and they say i use so and so as an expert witness he was good and you kind of get passed around or by publication and publication is probably a very good way to land an expert witness job because once you publish you are considered an expert in that area whatever you're publishing on if you're good enough to write about it and get it published in a peer-reviewed article in a peer-reviewed journal then you're considered an expert in that particular area and so if you publish your name will be out there on the internet and attorneys will will find you and they will contact you about how to be an expert witness Another way to land this job would be to maybe cold call attorneys. Uh, I found that that probably would not work. I've had some friends who've done that and it really didn't work too well. Call up an attorney and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm a nurse practitioner, I work in such and such area, and I'm interested in being an expert witness. I'll forward you my CV, save my contact info if you have a medical malpractice case that fits in my arena. I would happily serve as an expert witness. And so those are a couple different ways that you can find these jobs. Um, again, it's, it's a fun job. You get to review medical records, you get paid a lot, and ultimately you get to help whoever you are being retained with. So if you're retained on the plaintiff side, meaning you are, uh, you are on the patient side of the, uh, of the person suing, so you will say, yes, the practitioner did not meet the standard of care based on my opinion, based on what I see. The pressure did not meet the standard of care. Or you'll be on the defense side and you'll read through these medical records and you'll say, yeah, uh, the practitioner met the standard of care. There's no, absolutely no basis in my opinion for a medical malpractice lawsuit. 
And so you really get to help whoever you're retained by. And that's a, uh, that's a good feeling. It's a bit of a different feeling because again, you're not helping a patient, you're not in the ER taking care of sick people, but you are helping a person in need. And so that's, uh, it's a really cool feeling. So that's a little bit about being an expert witness in a medical malpractice lawsuit. Um, there are a ton of areas, a ton of topics that I did not cover. If you have questions about this, comment below. Let me know what you think about being an expert witness and have you ever served as an expert witness? I would love to hear your story. Tell me below, I would happily reply. I would love to connect with you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.